morning, everybody. Welcome to Temple Heights Baptist Church, our Sunday morning service, and we're so glad you're here. And those that are walking in, we're so glad you're walking on in. Let's uh, start off with hymn number 69, Thy Loving Kindness. Thy Loving Kindness. Let's hear you all sing loud and strong. Jumping from 69 to 430, that's a long way to go. 
<laughs> uh, don't you love this song here? And of course, uh, Ad, he likes to, uh, I don't know, when you're singing and you're looking at you further, notice who's doing the victory. It's not us. Look at that. The last, last part of it is, he plunged me to victory. It's not my choice. <laughs> he plunged me beneath his cleansing flood. He has already has the victory, and I got plunged into it. Another part of the verse, uh, where was it? He, he brought me to victory. He brought me to victory. Isn't that amazing? The Lord is good. The Lord is good. All right. I'm going to go there first, and then I'll tell you where it is. Two, six, oh, she already knows. Hymn number 267. 267. I'm not there. I'm here. Everyone there? 267.
This time we're going to have our scripture reading, which is found in Proverbs 8, 17 through 21. Proverbs 8, 17 through 21. Would you all stand in reverence to God's word as we honor the Lord in his presence? Proverbs 8, 17 through 21. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the path of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Proverbs 8, 7, 8 through 21. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your glorious word. We know that it still does its work with the Holy Spirit. Deal in our hearts. Draw us closer to thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. What's this? We'll take the handbook. Thank you. All right. I'm going to deal with a subject that is not real popular this morning. And I know that it's something we have to deal with. <clears throat> At the beginning of the year, I usually bring one or two messages on this. What the Bible says about our finances. How can I prevent falling off a fiscal cliff. Our economy in the United States right now is not well at all. In fact, it seems like it's getting worse. Everything is going up in prices. And uh, my wife was telling me just this morning that a pound of, of, of beef, a beef of a, a hamburger is five dollars. Five dollars a pound. Things are going sky high pretty soon. We're all going to be on diet. <laughs> like it or not. Because we won't be able to buy all that we would like. But how can we prevent falling off a personal fiscal cliff? No, God's holy word gives us the answers to all of our situations in life. The Bible is the manual of life. You know? The Bible speaks more on finances, believe it or not, than it does on any other subject. You might find that strange. But it does. And yet, many Christians still try to determine their own financial solutions by learning, leaning on their own understanding. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it that way. But the answers to your financial situation right now, even through this escalation in prices, the answers to all your financial situations are in the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God has the answers for everything. I'd like to bring some solutions here, not mine, but the Bible solutions, of how we can stay solid, even this erratic, teetottering tea situation in which the world is in. First of all, <coughs> and foremost, we should always put God first. Amen. When I put God first, I mean, give back to the Lord that which is rightfully belongs to Him anyway. Everything you have, as you know, belongs to God. God only asks us to give back one-tenth. And yet, people grumble about that, but would, like, would, would gladly pay 30% on a credit card. 
mean, you don't think twice about that. And God says in his word, if we do what he says, he will honor us. I'd like you to look, first of all, in Proverbs, the majority of the verses that I'm bringing this morning are from the words of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. By the way, Proverbs are words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. That's what they are. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance, <clears throat> and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy, pre and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. If you honor the Lord with all your substance, you say, what's your substance? Well, we don't live on farms the way we did back yonder, but we live in cities, and we earn salaries, and that's the substance God has given us. Say, well, I just live on Social Security. That's a substance, too. Did you know that if you just live on Social Security, you need to tithe on your Social Security? Say, oh, Pastor, you're stepping on toes this morning. <laughs> we need to put God first in everything. Listen, these are God's principles to stay solvent, even in a rickety situation in which we are. Honor the Lord. When we honor God and His Word, He will honor us. It says that very clearly. Those that do not tithe, there might be some here that still do not tithe. I challenge you as your pastor to take God at His Word this year. Amen. In the year 2022. <clears throat> live by faith. Don't live by sight. Amen? Another principle that I've learned, I learned the hard way in my younger years, I didn't do this, but I do it now. <clears throat> Stay away from loans. Amen. Stay away from loans and having many accounts. Get rid of those accounts. Pay them off if you can. Try to pay as many of them off. The more accounts, the less accounts that you have, the more money you're going to have in your pocket. I guarantee it. The Bible tells us this very clearly. Also in Proverbs, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Proverbs, chapter 6, <laughs> verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> My son, if thou be surety for thy friend... If thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Look what it says in verse 5. Deliver thyself as a robe from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. If you put your name on a loan, you're snared. Amen. They got you. Because they're going to be getting their interest. You see? And if you don't pay it on time, then you have penalties. On top of that. <clears throat> How do you like that? And so we need to... <clears throat> I'm a little uh, ready to hear myself tonight. <laughs> <clears throat> Stay away from loans. Pay them off if you can. Look at chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11, please. Verse 14 and 15. Proverbs chapter 11, 14 and 15. Where no counsel is... The people fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. I'm giving you some wise counsel this morning. Stay away from loans. If you can, 
I mean, stretch the dollars out as much as possible. Amen? Amen. I've learned to stretch Washington out until he screams. <laughs> I really have. Washington screams in my hands. Look what it says here also in verse 15. He that is surety, or the surety means, I've looked it up in, in a dictionary, old English, to, is to borrow. He that borrows from a, for a stranger shall smart for it. And he that hateth sure, certainship is sure. If you hate borrowing, you're going to be safe. Right. Don't take don't take loans as much as possible. You know, in Puerto Rico, <clears throat> they say, get this loan <clears throat> and consolidate all the rest of your loans. Hey, wow, that's a good idea. And you pay one price for all of the loans. Well, after a while, you say, hey, I've got a little extra money here. Well, maybe we can get another loan. And before long, you're in debt. You're back to the where you were before. You know what I'm talking about. So stay away from it. Stay away from it. Number one, put God first. Learn how to tithe in the year 2022. Start off on the right foot. Honor God and He will honor you. Number two, stay away from loans. And if you have them, Pay them off. Get rid of those things. And if you have a lot of credit cards, I'll tell you what to do. Do plastic surgery on them. <laughs> Say, what is plastic surgery on credit cards? You get yourself some scissors, you get the credit cards, and you break them up in pieces. I remember doing that with um, my wife at that passed away, she, uh, she didn't know about these principles. And she, any car that would come her way, she said, oh, wow, I don't have to pay anything for one year. <laughs> but after that year, what happens? Boom! They hit you. <clears throat> you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so stay away from loans. And then third thing, Learn to save. Learn to save for times of emergency. Are we living in a time of emergency now? Yes, we are. If you had saved up in times past, you wouldn't be going through the rough times that you are right now. Because you would be above water. Amen? Learn to save. For times of emergency. Have an emergency fund. I've learned I have an emergency fund. And I try not to get to it until I have to. Until it's a real emergency. And so, for example, if all of a sudden you need to buy four new tires for your car. And uh, your car will run its tires down sooner or later and you don't have it in your budget right then and there for that month, but if you have an emergency fund, you can take care of it. Amen? And then you can build that emergency fund up again. So, have an emergency fund. And also, listen to this, have a retirement fund. Amen? Right. Have a retirement fund. Now, you say, well... I'm still, I've still got a lot of gumption in me. You really? <laughs> I used to bring a, I used to be a spring chicken. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. I think I still have a little spring. All right. But you lose the spring chicken, and you have to have a retirement fund. Learn from the ants. The Bible tells us. You say that's all. In, the, in Proverbs? Oh, yes. Look in Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, please. Those little ants that are so bothersome in your backyard. 
and in your front yard, and sometimes they get into the house. Look what they do in Proverbs chapter 6 and verses 6 through 8. Look what it says here. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. You know, I look for that word sluggard. That's not a word that we use in our vernacular today. And you know what I'm going to tell you what it is? You lazy person. That's what the word sluggard means. People that are lazy don't save. They get it and they spend it. They get it and they spend it as fast as they get it. But you have to learn how to save. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. I'm not going to be popular after this message. <laughs> Consider her ways and be wise, which ha having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meal in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So when the hard times come, they have food. We have to learn from the ant. Amen? Not only that, don't be a slugger. Don't be lazy. But the Bible tells us very clearly in chapter 11. Let's go to chapter 11 again. I'm telling you, all these verses, are these good verses, teach us about finances. In, in the Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. Where there is no counsel is the people fall, but the multitude of counsel, their safety. He that is surety for a stranger shall smart for it, and he that hateth surety is sure. Stay away from borrowing and keep to your savings. Don't borrow from other people. And you know what? I've learned that when somebody comes to me, now, I don't want you to do this, but I do this. Some people really come to me, and they don't come to me often and say, uh, could you lend me a little money? What do you want? I've had uh, some people say that. How much do you need? Well, I just need so much. Really. I'll pay you back. And after a while, I say, that's yours. I'll give it to you. You say, you do that? Because I know if I lend it to them and they have to pay me back, after a while, they'll hide from me. They try to get away from me. They try to avoid me. And I don't want that to happen. I want to keep our friendship. Amen? And <clears throat> keep our brothership. Now you say, well, I'm going to go borrow some money from the pastor. <laughs> Listen, I'll do that if I see really see there's a need. And if I have it and it's in my power, I'll give it to you. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm not a rich man. But I have a rich father. Amen. And he supplies all my needs and some and uh, the Lord has seen me thus far up to now. <coughs> and uh, uh, believe it or not, money comes to me. Say, how does that happen, Pastor? I have a church that I <coughs> pastored in Puerto Rico for over 25 years. <coughs> we started that church. I don't ask them to do this. They do it on their own. But two times a year, they send me a love offering. And it always comes when I need it the most. God takes care of his own. Amen? Amen? God takes care of his own. And you, you'll see that that happens. That happens to you. God will take care of you. Uh, you'll have some money come back to you uh, from maybe an account or something that they, uh, they charge you more than what they were supposed to. Say, has that happened to you, Pastor? Yeah. People have charged me. Hey, that 
that happen to me with a bank recently. A bank? Boy, I, I almost fainted when I saw that the bank was giving me some money back. They gave me some money back. I said, what in the world? He says, we want to apologize. They sent me a real formal letter. We overcharge you. Because of that, we're giving you this money back. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, God takes care of his own. Amen? And uh, this is another one <clears throat> that I've learned through the years. <clears throat> and God has been good to me that I can do it. Practice generosity. <laughs> Practice generosity. Did you know that generosity is a characteristic of love? Amen? <clears throat> generosity is a characteristic of love. Give to the poor when you're able. When you see there's a real need and you're able to do something, do it. Do it. Not to make yourself, but do it for the honor and glory of the Lord. <laughs> Amen? Do it as a testimony of God's provision. Don't trust in your riches. Tell you what, I'm not a rich person. Pastor, by the way, I don't know a whole lot of pastors that are rich. I don't know a whole lot of pastors that are rich. I'm not a rich pastor. But uh, I'll tell you one thing. I've learned to trust in the Lord. And uh, the more you trust in Him, the more God will give you for your needs. Amen? I want you to look at Proverbs 11 again. Proverbs 11 again. This time we're going to be looking in verses 24 through 26. Proverbs 11, 24 through 26. There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than his meat, but it tendeth, but it tendeth to poverty. The liberal soul, or another way of saying that, the generous soul, shall be made fat. Hey, is that what the Bible says? Yes. The generous soul shall be made fat. In other words, you'll have more than enough. And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. God sees and takes account for everything. Amen? Amen. If it is in your power to help the needy person, and they are really in need, do so. Do what you can. God will bless you for that. I'll I have another principle here that I've written down. Learn to work honestly. You know, I, my dad, he wasn't a Christian for the majority of his life, although he was brought up in a Christian environment. For some reason or other, he got away from Christendom. And he didn't live a wild life, he just didn't go to church. He didn't want anything to do with church. I guess he had a bad experience along the way. In the last two weeks of his life, he turned his life over to Christ with my mom. And uh, But one thing I learned from my dad, he never taught me to go to church. In fact, I was the first person to really go to church regularly in my immediate family. I was the first person. And then I got my little brother, who I know he's watching, he started going to church. My little brother got saved and baptized. Amen. And my mom came, and she started being faithful. And my dad, he was just hard and ornery. But two weeks before he died, he put his trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. But one thing I learned from my dad, although he wasn't a Christian, he was an honest person. And he was a hard-working person. And um, I, I remember my dad working so hard that he would, his hands, would, you can know the hands of a, people that work out. He, was, he worked with his hands. There's nothing that my dad couldn't do with his hands. He learned on his own. He was... He did carpentry, he did 
knew how to do plumbing work, he did masonry, anything you can think of, my dad figured it out and he could do it. And that's how he was. He's just a, a hard working man. And uh, the word work is not a bad word. Young people today think work, oh, that's a bad word. Work is not a bad word. Work is good, a good word. And I'm going to tell you one thing. A lot of people nowadays, they try to get rich quick. They look at these schemes that they advertise. Get rich quick schemes. They seem to be too good to be true. I'm going to tell you something. If something seems too good to be true, they usually are. They're getting you for your money. Amen? Stay away from those get-rich-quick schemes. Stay away from them. Amen? Go back to the word work. God blesses those that honestly work. Amen? Look at the word, uh, Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 11 through 14. Proverbs 12, 11 through 14. <clears throat> he that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteousness yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. Verse 14. <clears throat> A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. In other words, if you work hard and you work honestly, you're going to reap the benefits of it also. Amen? Look at chapter 13 and verse 11. Chapter 13 and verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Amen. Nothing can take the place of hard, honest work. It's good to work. Amen? Get you a job. Get you a good job. Stay there. Don't jump around. I've seen people jump from job to job to job to job to job. You know what that tells me? Instability. Instability. We need some stability today. Amen? We need stability. Look at chapter 14 and verse 4. Chapter 14 and verse 4. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. Verse 23 in the same chapter. In all labor there is profit, but in the talk of the lips tendereth only to penury. You know what that means? Penury means extreme poverty. I, I look the words up that I don't understand so that I can understand the verse better. Amen? Amen. And it says here, in other words, from that verse I can get talk is cheap. <coughs> Talk is cheap. And so, a lot of people, I remember, say, oh, I've got this and this. People make believe they're, they're rich. You know, they're really poor. And I've seen some people that look so poor that they're using dungarees that they've had for 10 years. And you look at them and so forth. They probably got a bank account that'll, that'll make you faint. Why? Because they've labored at it. They've learned these principles. And God has blessed them. They have a home of their own. And it's paid off. 
How many of you would like to have your home paid off? That's a blessing in itself too, amen? amen. That's a blessing in itself too. And let me, let me tell you one more thing here. Do not try to be what you are not. Don't try to be something you're not. In other words, don't pretend that you're something that you're not. Look at chapter 13 and verse 7. Chapter 13 and verse 7. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. And there is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Have you seen that? I remember in several occasions we had some people like that. And uh, some people, usually the, uh, the most... Uh, uh, the most poorest people in our church were usually the best givers. Amen. The poorest people of our church were the best givers. And those that had money, boy, they, they tried to give a dollar and the doctor, the dollar would stick to their hand. They wouldn't come off their hand when the offering plate went by. It just stu stuck to their hands. They couldn't get it off. There's a lot of people like that. Amen. And if they give five dollars, my goodness, they're going to be, they're going to faint. They're going to faint. And so, don't try to be what you're not. And, and the last thing here that I'd like to bring out, leave an inheritance, the Bible tells us, onto your children and onto your children's children, if possible. Amen. Leave an inheritance. Onto your children and onto your children's children. You know what the best inheritance you can leave for your kids? Pay for their education. Get their, get, give them a head start on your education. If you can't pay for their whole education, at least give them a head start. Amen? In the right direction. Show them that you love them. And you want them to be something in life. Uh, a good citizen. And worthwhile and be a professional and in different fields and so forth. We need people like that. Parents that will encourage their kids. But you know what the best inheritance of all is? I'm going to show you that verse that tells us that we need to leave an inheritance to our children and our children's children. That's found in chapter 13 and verse 22. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. You know, uh, we had a lady in Puerto Rico, and all she lived on was Campbell soup. And back then, we had tang. How many of you remember tang? Now, some of the young people don't know what I'm talking about, tang. Okay? It's like a little powdered type substance and you put in water and, and orange juice. And, okay? This lady, she lived on Tang and Campbell's soup. That's all she had. And uh, she lived in a very modest place. And uh, my wife and I, we led her to the Lord and we went by there, was on our way to come to church, and so we offered to pick her up and bring her. She became very, very regular. In fact, she loved the church. She loved the church to no end. But the time came, and one day they found her dead in her little house. I asked her on many occasions if she had any family. She says, no, they're all dead. They're gone. I said, wow. You don't have any family? What about nieces and nephews or cousins? Not that I know of. They're all dead. When she died, the government found out that she was loaded. She was eating, drinking Tang and Campbell soup all her life, and she was loaded. She could have had beef steak every now and then. If you liked Campbell's soup, that's fine. Have a beef steak every now and then. 
do something else. Amen? But she was loaded. You know what happened? Since she didn't have a will, the government took it all. Now I'm going to tell you this. Make a will even though you have a little something. You don't have a whole lot, but whatever you have, make a will. If you don't, whatever you have in the bank, if it's not in a will, the IRS is going to take it. They're going to take it. That's how it is. The U.S. of A. I love my country, but I don't love them that much that I want to give all my inheritance to it. I want to give it to my family <coughs> and my grandchildren <coughs> and people that I love. You know what I want to do? I want to help some people in missions. Amen. And I'm going to leave part of my inheritance to go to missions around the world to buy properties so that people can put churches and things like that. You say, Pastor, you're crazy. I'm crazy for Jesus. That's what I'm crazy for. Because I want the gospel to be spread. Whatever I can accumulate by God's grace. Yes, I'll take care of myself and I'll take care of the poor and I'll be generous and I do all of that and I don't take loans. I don't take loans. I live on a budget. By, by the way, the word budget is strange to some of you folks. You don't even know what it is. I want you to look into it. Get a budget. Live on it. That'll help you to do all of these other things I've been telling you about. Amen? Amen. But I've learned this in my life. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to live. I'm praying that God will give me another several years down the road that I can continue preaching. I love to preach and teach. And whatever God has taught me, I want to pass it on. But the greatest inheritance that you can give is to teach your children and children's children to honor to reverence and to worship God. That's the greatest inheritance. Teach them the fear of the Lord. Teach them the fear of the Lord. True riches are found in the Lord and in His wisdom to see things the way God sees things. And I'd like to end on my message on the portion that we began with in Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17 through 21 Proverbs cha chapter 8 verse 17 through 21 I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me if you look at the beginning of the chapter, in verse 1, it says, Doth not wisdom cry? Wisdom is speaking in this chapter. What is wisdom? Have you ever thought of what is wisdom? Wisdom is to see things the way God sees things. Amen? Amen. Wow, if that's it, then I want wisdom. I want the wisdom of God. He says, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yea, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I had, I, I, I lead in the way of righteousness, and in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. If we seek God's wisdom, 
And we begin to see things the way God sees things. We begin to put into practice what God teaches us. He says here, I will cause those that love me, the wisdom of God, to inherit substance. <coughs> What's that mean? You're going to have all you need in this world. You're going to have all you ever needed and some. And I will fill their treasures. I'm telling you a, a secret here. If we do things God's way, God will keep you in the midst of this world that's rickety right now, financially speaking, you, 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 myself, we can be solvent by God's wisdom. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity of bringing this second Sunday message in the month of January, this year, 2022. You've spoken to our hearts. You've spoken to my heart again that I need to keep you first and foremost in everything that I do. Lord, I want to be generous. Lord, I want to utilize what you've given me with wisdom. Help me, Lord, to give to the needy. Help me, Lord, to help those that need help. Help me, Lord, to live a good testimony with what you've given me. Help me to have enough and more than enough that I can be a testimony to those that don't know you. And Father, that we can show the world that if we believe in you and do what you say, you will take care of us. Lord, bless the message. Maybe there's someone here without Christ. The first step they really need to do is to put their heart in Christ Jesus. Put their life in Jesus' hands. And then follow these principles. And you will show them the way in this life that's really unsure. Father, I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If there's anyone watching, you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. You can't put these principles in practice because your main problem is you need to get your soul in order. You need to get your heart in order with God. You need to trust Him and walk in His way, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Would you do that? Pray with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, I need you. My life is in shambles. I don't know what to do. The world is so unsure. And I need your direction. Right now I recognize I'm a sinner. I'm void. I'm empty. And I put my total trust and the only Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who died for me and rose for me, help me to live my life for you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. I know this is not a popular message, finances, but it's part of the Bible. And it's just as much Bible as John 3.16. And I hope you got something from that. Amen? Amen? I hope you got something from that. Put it into practice. May this be a year that you start off on the right foot. Amen? Amen. We're going to read the announcements now. And I hope you can listen carefully. 
Tonight, after the 6 o'clock evening service, we'll be having a missions committee meeting. Wednesday at 6 o'clock. By the way, if I can interrupt real quick, anybody who is here is a part of the committee. We are, we are all welcome to participate in the missions <laughs> decisions. Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m., we are back to our regular schedule of Bible study in English and Spanish and one of our kids. 2021 tithing records are on the back table. Please read your bulletin and check your bulletin boards for upcoming dates to remember. Amen. We're so glad everyone's here today. And I pray that you will take these teachings, put them into practice. Amen. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.